Hi STAT students, in this short video I'm going to show you how you can use SPSS to make a t-test for independent means. The information that I have shown here is from page 279 which was we were looking at um, a fictional study of the effect of expressing writing on physical health. So we had two groups. The first group was those that did the expressive writing and I've used one to represent them. And then we had a control group which didn't do the expressive writing. Well when we talk about this null hypothesis we're saying that there's no difference in the mean health score for either of these groups. Remember our idea is to be able to reject the null hypothesis. So anyway I've got my data, I'm going to go up here to analyze, and then I'm going to compare my means of my two groups, those that did the writing and those that did not. So I'll go down here to independent samples t-test, and you'll notice that um, my columns are displayed, my variables, and I want to put group as my grouping variable, and you'll notice that it says define groups. So I'm just going to use one and two for my groups and then hit continue. And then my test variable then is going to be the health score. What was the health score for those that did the expressive writing and those that did not? So we'll go ahead and go OK and first off we get our group statistics. And remember that in our groups, each one had 10 people in it. So the degrees of freedom for each group would be 10 minus 1 or 9. That comes into play when you take a look at this independent samples t-test. Because you'll notice this right here, the degrees of freedom is 18. That's because we have 9 plus 9. All right, so if you take a look, the t-test that we ended up with was plus or minus 2.425. Well now, whether or not we want to calculate whether this is significant or not, which is why I like looking at page 279 through 281 where they explain this problem. If you were to go back and look at the appendix on page Appendix 2, which starts on page 668, and we're looking at a two-tailed test there. If you look at a um, confidence interval of five one-hundredths with a degrees of freedom of 18, you would see that that critical value is 2.101. Well, I know that 2.425 is bigger than 2.101 and also negative 2.425 is smaller than negative 2.101. So that tells me that my calculated value is lying in that critical region. So because of that I would want to reject the null hypothesis and accept the research or alternative hypothesis and the fact that doing this expressive writing does make a difference on a person's overall health score. Thanks, I hope this has been useful for you for your Unit 7 project.